Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Lee McCulloch and Alison McConnell with me on the show. And here's what we'll be talking about. Celtic and Rangers fans give their take on the news there will be a 5% away allocation at the Old Firm Derby from next season. It's good to get them back, it's a start. Um... I think it's too little. I'd rather more away fans were present at the event. James Tavernier reacts to becoming the highest scoring defender in British history with a stunning volley and the victory over Hibs. You would have told me when I first jumped in to be a professional footballer that I'd have a chance to be the, the highest scoring defender in British history, then I wouldn't really believe you. John Kennedy insists Celtic are ready for Rangers after the Hoops return to top spot ahead of this Sunday's potential title decider at Ibrox. And Derek McInnes reveals his innovative thinking behind fielding two strikers this season to combat financial restraints of signing a prolific goal scorer. We didn't think we could buy uh, get a striker in the door that could guarantee his 20. So, in simple basic terms, we just put two of together that would maybe get us 10 each. Brilliant. Great way to look at it, Dell, and hopefully other people take uh, you up at that and start playing with two strikers. How refreshing uh, from Derek McInnes. Lots to talk about on the programme. Might as well start with the fact that uh, your support is absolutely superb. If you want to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, you can do to join the football family. And if you download the app, you'll get all the breaking news at your fingertips. We really do appreciate your support. Uh, and as ever, it doesn't matter what level you work at. Um, Everybody from uh, right out at the coalface to the higher echelons, people with uh, you know fast cars, they're all watching the programme and people from other sports as well, Ruffy, because quite simply, I uh, got a lovely message from the head of British tennis, Leon Smith, watches the programme all the time, loves the fact that we love tennis <laughs> and is going to come on the programme, which is fantastic. fantastic. And the great news is um, I think we can uh, I think we can organise a game of doubles against Leon and his partner, wow. which is going to be fantastic. fantastic. I reckon, uh, I've had a think about it, I've had a look at how he plays, I reckon we can take them over the three sets yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think yeah. Ruffy uh, I, I think uh, I think we'll be lucky to get a point yeah, 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 um, but right, nevertheless yeah. it'd be good though wouldn't oh, it it's maybe an, a good contact for Wimbledon tickets <laughs> <laughs> the Honestly, well, I'm thinking a game of tennis. He's thinking. I'm <laughs> um, absolutely delighted that Leon said there's a lovely message, and of course, um, always uh, like to have uh, our fans near and far, and from other sports as well. And, and we're going to take them up on that. Yeah, definitely. brilliant. Yeah, play them at doubles before yes. we get them on it. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Can you give me the look you give me when I miss a shot and you're just standing at the net doing nothing? Just a shake of the head. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it in a nutshell. Um, what a weekend of the football. Um, of course, uh, lots of twists and turns at the top end and the bottom end as well. Um, but of course, we took the opportunity to get our reporters out there asking the question about the news about the allocation that will return uh, next season to the Old Firm Games. 5%, maybe not what we're all looking for. Uh, certainly, I think a lot of fans uh, and a lot of people in the industry were hoping that there would be a higher allocation for the away supporters, but it's a step in the right direction. Well, let's get the thoughts of fans up and down the country. About time. Um, better 5% or something than 100% or nothing, I suppose. So I thrilled. We're really looking forward to it. 5% is better than what we were getting there, and I've been in the 800 people in the corner, it's not a nice, it's not a nice atmosphere to be in because you fans on either side of you, not very good, but at least it's something. But to get the atmosphere back and get the crowds in, yes, 100%, we need, we, need, uh, we, need, uh, we, need, uh, we need the supporters back in the crowds. It's good to get them back, it's a start, um, just hope that the toys don't get thrown at the pram again, but we'll see what happens, but um, it's good to make it, the, the game needs it. Um, it's the biggest derby in the world and with the fans, you hear it all over the world now, it's not the same anymore, but it's good to have it back. It suits me. Uh, previously, I think Celtic having the full room long stand and a Rangers keeper having a full half, the fans right at his back, was unfair. Uh, I think it's a kind of happy medium. Uh, it's always a good atmosphere in European nights, so we're a good allocation. Aye, I'm quite happy with that. I think it's incredibly bad. I'll never ever celebrate uh, having a cup of water when I used to own the stream. Do you understand? Um, I think it's a, 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 a it's a move forward, but again, take everything away for you, give you a little back. You know, don't celebrate losing uh, five percent. Is is it's a derision? You know. I think it's too little. I'd rather more away fans were present at the event. 
it makes for a better atmosphere. Well, thank you to the fans who expressed their opinions. So many more we could put into that piece uh, from across uh, the whole of Scottish football. Uh, again, I think we haven't all had a chance to have a say on it, but I would like to see not only you know one stand allocated for the away supporters in this fixture, I would also like to see if it does come back to the 7,000 Lee, I would like to see the Rangers fans housed in a better position at Celtic Park rather than the corner in the corner in, in, in round. I think it would be far it would be fairer if you had the Rangers fans right behind the goal and just like, like it as like it would like be Ibrox. Yeah, I, I don't know the logistics of that. I don't know if the police and the anything. But I agree. I, I would I think the common denominators everybody's wanting the full allocation back. But it's probably a little bit early to do that. Whatever the the powers of be have decided that they're letting a certain amount in five percent. Um, it would be great to get back to the old days where the Celtic fans at Ibrox had the full stand behind the goals and uh, the Rangers fans had that, that same allocation because it makes that day super special. Yeah, I mean, as I've said on many an occasion, Alison, technically it might not be the best game um, across the world, but it's certainly one of the top derbies when you have it as two fan bases and a fair representation. Yeah, I think there, there's an element of theatre and an element of pantomime that goes with the fixture and I think we, we, we all know that, we've seen it. I think the, the game was diluted when you took the fans out of it. I think um, it definitely loses something. I think that was a, a common complaint from players, former players like Lee and, and many more who'd all experienced the fixture with a full allocation of supporters who all felt as though it was missing something. I know many supporters felt the same way too and I think this is a step in the right direction. I think you would hope that it might lead to a bigger a bigger number. I don't know that you'll ever get back to the seven, eight thousand at what it was but it, it definitely it's a step towards a I think just a common sense solution. Yeah, forgive me, Ruffy, for being the killjoy in it all, but it, it's just basically, <coughs> uh, as I said on Friday when it first broke, um, it's just a little trick to say we're giving you 5%. It should be back to the full allocation. Yeah, but as everybody was saying, I think uh, players, supporters, they, they all agree that they want back to where we were. As most of them have said there, it's a start. You know, at least they're talking about it. They're not making up excuses and saying, no, it's too cost too dear to you know, coordinate that, all that stuff. You know, yeah. let somebody put their foot down and say, right, this is what you're doing and this is this is the way we're going. Yep, absolutely. Um, OK, here's the results from the weekend in the Scottish Premiership. Uh, Aberdeen 2, Ross County 1. It was a huge game. The Dons got the victory they were looking for. Hearts 1, Kilmarnock 1, Motherwell 1, St Mirren 1, Rangers 3, Hibs 1. St Johnson won Dundee 2 and then yesterday Livingston 0, Celtic 3. Um, Rangers went top of the table for 24 hours with that win over Hibs um, before of course Celtic restored their position after defeating Livingston um, and it's all geared up for the big game at Ibrox. I, I must just say to start it all off, again as you know I've been consistent throughout the year, um, I'm a big fan of what James Tavernier has achieved and I think he deserves all the plaudits that come his way because to become the highest scoring defender in British football is no mean feat. No, it's absolutely incredible. You know, that uh, I don't know where the criticism came from early on. You know, what he gives to Rangers in a forward position, you know, delivery into the box, scoring goals, penalties. He's just a full package, you know, from a full back. And, uh, you know, he deserves of every credit it comes his way. Yeah, I think people will look back with even greater fondness, Lee, when he eventually hangs the boot up. <coughs> I think so. I think that's the way it sort of, of works in, in football these days. But he's been a tremendous servant, well over 300 games, um, ridiculous amount of goals. And I think it was Graham Alexander he picked on it. Yeah, yeah. So it just tremendous achievement. I think uh, we, we top it off for him. Personally, is uh, <coughs> lifting a lifting the, the league trophy at the end of the season, but um, we'll we'll wait and see. Yeah, absolutely. I love that line you said. You know, you know, people start to look at you more fondly when you when you hang yeah, the boots up. Yes. Did you find that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, you still uh, you still have to score penalties. I mean, although um, people go, oh, there's a lot of penalties in there. I think it's an art. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I think he's become he became a, a fairly big game 
player for Rangers when you look at some of the goals, goals in key games, goals at critical points of games. I think penalties and set pieces can be such an important part of, of the modern game. And I think if you look at Celtic this season, who have missed more than half of the penalties that they've had, uh, I think it's to have someone who's very reliable from that position, I think is important in your team. And I think also having a, a dead ball specialist for, for free kicks can be huge in the game uh, and can be the difference in games that are tight, in games where you're being frustrated, where you're not getting the breakthrough. Celtic had it for a long time with Lee Griffiths. I'm not sure they've really had someone who's been so reliable since he left the club. Yeah, um, I think I'm led to believe that the, the Hibs official uh, Twitter account had a, a sweepstake to see when Rangers were going to get a penalty, much to the annoyance of everybody, but that's the way the whole of society is. Anything for a noise up. Um, <coughs> I, 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 thought it was a, I thought it was a harsh penalty, but equally I thought it was a harsh decision to rule out Scott Wright's uh, rebound. Was, what did so you make it of it? It's a weird scenario for me. Uh, penalty, I'm not sure it was a, a definite penalty. And then he's missed the penalty. James Tavernier has missed the penalty. And then the encroachment from Scott Wright, but I think there was encroachment from Hibbs as well. So it would suggest a retake. Yeah. But I don't know. Has any has anybody come out and said anything or give an explanation for since then? Do you expect that to happen? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what you were hoping for there. Um, it's, ve it's a very, very strange one. And you can see why clubs and managers are getting more and more annoyed. Yeah, I, I, although he missed the penalty, Tavernier did come up with a goal, Ruffy. Yeah, a tremendous strike. But it just shows you, I mean, a full-back. Why is he there? Why is he in the edge of the 18-yard box? You know, and, and that just shows you the quality. <laughs> what you no. say, get back, get back. No, no, that's what I'm saying. That's how we're talking about how good he is. You know, he's in a forward position more times than, than any. You know, I, I can't think of any full-back in the present day who gets forward as much as him. Yeah, and is active in in the penalty area or around about then, and assists as well, roughly. Yeah, I think people yeah. look at it. Yeah, he's got everything. He's got the whole package. I think he just gets criticised sometimes when they go into Europe and Rangers maybe lose a goal on his side. Yeah, you know, and they say he's not defending properly, but for what he gives you, you've got to accept that. Yeah, and as a captain himself, he's uh, you know well pleased with <coughs> reaching that milestone. Yeah, it's crazy because if you would have told me when I first jumped in to be a professional footballer that I'd have a chance to be the, the highest scoring defender in British history, then I wouldn't really believed you. But, you know, that's that's obviously down to all the teammates that I've played over with all the years um, that have helped me through 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 the journey. Um, and, yeah, I'll just continue working hard and and see how many I can get until I hang my boots up okay, in yes. a long, long way down the line. Yeah, OK, just in case anybody thought he was going to chuck it early. Um, I'll tell you one thing, though, over the weekend, although you and Lee, unfortunately, um, were watching uh, a poor game at Fir Park, uh, there were some great goals. Rabi Matondo was one. Yeah, and I think it'll be a bonus getting players now coming back into the team fit, going into the last... Uh they're going into the final run and obviously looking ahead to Celtic and then uh, post-split fixtures. I think uh, Matondo coming back in will be good news. I, yeah, I th thought it was a great goal. I thought Tavernier's goal was a good goal too. Um, but yeah, I think just getting key players back, Celtic too, obviously bringing back Katati, Cameron carter Vickers, question mark over Callum McGregor, whether he'll be fit now for Sunday too. I think both teams slowly edging their way to full strength just as, as we go into the running. Yeah, um, Clement himself has uh, paid tribute to Rabi Matondo because, as ever with managers, they want to try and improve uh, players' performances. I'm also really happy with the goal of Rabi today because, for me, it was of his biggest working points to keep controlling his shots. Um, in the past, I saw him missing too many chances that he was shooting wild and not putting this ball in control in the corner and he's been working hard with all staff on that last couple of months and I see more and more goals like that in the training and also in the games now. Yeah, it was an absolute belter. What did you make of Hibs though, Rafi? <laughs> yeah, I think they were one each, you know, I, I think they, they thought they were back in the game but it's bad. It's bad management, you no know, losing a goal. You no, know, what seven minutes into the first half, you would have thought the defender, you know, and giving them a chance to go in at half time, reassess the situation. But when Rangers got that second one, they just seemed to fall right out of the game. They were getting more defensive through. But you know, 
give Rangers credit in the second half. I think they played particularly well. Yeah, well, not only you, but uh, Nick Montgomery, the Hebs boss, was uh, praising Rangers to the high heavens. Thankfully for us, there was a, a foot in the box, which meant the goal was disallowed, so probably felt that was a bit of justice. You need a bit of luck when you come to places like this. Yeah, and you think maybe maybe uh, that's a bit of luck you needed. And then we get back in the game and concede just before half-time. So, yeah, no. On the basis of that, yeah, we didn't deserve anything from the game today, but they're a quality team. You know, For me, right now, they're probably the best team in, in the competition and um, got some quality players, so yeah, you can't you can't leave them unmarked in the box and let them shoot from the edge of the box, otherwise you're going to get punished than we did today. Yeah, it didn't quite work out for Hibs, and uh, as I look at things, Ruffy, uh, they've got St Johnson at home uh, before Motherwell away, before the league splits. Yeah, I think it's getting exciting. I think obviously Kilmarnock are there. Uh, I think the, the top six, there's three teams still going for that one. You know, I think we're all anticipating next Sunday, you know, and, and taking the rest of the games in there. But uh, it's good that there's still a lot to play for, top, middle and bottom. Yeah. Um, you think top six is a chance or is it gone? For? Hibs. No, I think they'll still believe, you know, that they, they can get something out of it. But uh, I've not got the fixture just light in front of me, but... Uh, if they're all going to play each other, there's always a chance. You know, you could pick up six points and that could take you further up the league. Yep, OK. Um, Rangers get uh, the three points on the Saturday. On the Sunday, uh, Livingston, there was a time when Livingston were a, a thorn in Celtic's side mm. at Almond Vale, mm. but not on Sunday. No, I thought it was fairly comfortable for Celtic once they got that first goal. I think uh, about unfortunate for Livingston's perspective, but I think once they got that breakthrough... I think it was fairly comfortable. I think Livingston for me now are gone. I think uh, I think that ten point gap is just far too big to claw back. I think uh, I think realistically you're looking at at the end of the top flight road for David Martin the side. But for Celtic, I think uh, pressure on a bit, knowing that Rangers had won, knowing the the week that they're going into. Uh, but a lot of positives for them, I think, in bringing players back in. Uh, getting a, a full quota up ahead of the game on Sunday at Ibrox and just uh, scoring goals. I think that uh, are they better off by one goal? I think it's their goal difference superior by one one goal, which may come into play if it ends up fairly tight. But I think at this stage of the season, it's about banking points. It's just about getting through games, getting points on the table and, and moving on. Yeah, as far as the, the game itself... Uh, was concerned. It was three going on six for Shamal George. It, the last goal that Celtic scored it was a bit soft, but boy, he produced some good saves. Yeah, he done really well to keep the score line down. Celtic, I thought, were really comfortable. I think it, in the afternoon for Brendan Rodgers to know Ben the dugout, it was everything was perfect. We had Tati getting game time scales. The only small thing I think Brendan Rodgers would have wanted was some game time for Callum McGregor. Yeah. I think it's a big ass to not play comfy nowhere and get chucked into an old firm game. He's got the ability, yeah. but fitness is what I mean. I was going to say to you, what, what you know, there, there are undoubtedly times when the manager asks you <coughs> to step up to the plate, especially if you're an important player. What's the biggest thing that will be his obstacle from a professional player's point of view when you're asked to go in when you're not you don't have that much fitness, even though Callum is undoubtedly a talented player. It's difficult because it's not as if you can pace yourself in, a, in an old firm game to make sure you last the full 90 minutes. Um, so I would imagine Celtic will play a bounce game this week behind closed doors for him. And I think Rangers will do the same way, like your seamers and people coming back, because the game time is golden when it comes to to match day. You can do all the running in the world, but it's just not the same um, as getting that that match fitness. That's right. And it's like oh, you're looking me for. I've never. All right. By the way. By the way. By the way. Yeah, that's your man. <laughs> okay, I've missed that. I'm willing to go in for the World Cup game. Yeah, I'm fine. Um, and on that point, do you think he starts? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there's maybe a bit of a contradiction there. But yeah. he's that good, he has to start if he's fit. Mm. Yeah. Um, as far as, uh, well, obviously with Brendan in the in the stands, John Kennedy was the man who uh, basically uh, looked at the game, looked at the win, and then looked ahead to the match against Rangers. This is what he had to say. Um, I think we're ready for Rangers. Our attacking game has really clicked in the last little while. We've now got options as well. It's not just the starting players. 
It's what comes in behind that. It's about keeping calm, controlling what we can control, which is the training. And when next weekend comes, we'll deal with that. Um, it is a it is a really interesting uh, head to head this time around. I can remember the first Ibrox encounter, Lee, because Celtic had a really makeshift back line. And <coughs> everybody was looking and saying, you know, this is this is the real chance for Rangers yeah. to take it to uh, Celtic and, and win at <coughs> home at Ibrox. And in the end, it just didn't materialise. Celtic came out with a 1-0 victory. Uh, this time around, I think it's a slightly... It's a slightly different level because of the way Philippe Clement has the side, the way they're playing. Celtic have got players back. How do you, how do you see it? I think you're spot on about the first game, um, but it's a different Rangers team getting into the weekend with a different mindset, with a different culture, environment, different manager. Um, but arguably, it's a different Celtic team as well. I think they are starting to hit a bit of form. I really believe that um, for the last few games. This season, Celtic arguably have been disappointing for the standards they've set, um, but they keep winning. They're still top of the league as we speak. Um, it's just got the makings. Of both teams winning at the weekend is, get, is a perfect scenario for this old firm game coming up. And I think it'll be really intense, really close. I think the first goal and the game will be vital. And with that in mind, bearing in mind the way it went the last time, because the one thing that stuck in my mind about that game was the fact that Rangers seemed to allow McGregor in, in periods in that game the chance to dictate from the middle of the park. He was all over the place in control of it. Where, who do you think is the key player and where do you think the key issues um, are in this match? If, if Rangers, for example, are to win it, I think that was highlighted for the first game, for the first Old Firm game. I think he get too much room, room uh, to go and play and dictate the game. I think if that's that would have been the manager's instructions at the time, why nobody could really get near him. Um, I think the middle of the pitch is going to be crucial. Callum plays. I think Lundstrom will be a big player in Rangers' side. And then out wide, um, Rangers, uh, Celtic's wide players um, maybe start to come onto a game. And then you've you've got the Celtic are clicking going forward, as, as John Kennedy saying. Uh, Rangers' defence have been pretty good. I think the the main battle is the middle of the pitch. <laughs> yeah, and and the key man for you is Lindstrom. Lindstrom will be. I think he'll be very very important. <laughs> yeah, um, Ruffy. I, I I don't agree with Kennedy saying there and the the players that are. And the sidelines. I think Rangers are stronger in that department mm. now. I think Rangers' bench is better. The games now are like 90 minutes plus 10. I think it'll be important what players are coming on in the latter part. And I think that for for a long, long time, it was always Celtic's bench that was coming on and turning games. I think Rangers have now got that advantage. Yeah. Um, Ali? Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's interesting. I think you've seen them, both teams go through different periods in this season, neither can point to, to, to being a particularly compelling campaign. I think the fact that Rangers are here in the, and in the position that they are going into this game, Celtic will will see a, a, as a remiss on, on their part because having won uh, that game, that opening game at Ibrox, when, you know, that Lyager, Bielke instant and all the rest of it, few expected them to come out of it with all three points and then having won again at Celtic Park at, at Christmas time. I think Celtic should feel as though they should be out of sight. The fact that they weren't owes to a couple of factors. One, the Philip Clement factor when he came in and steadied the ship, but also just how um, how inconsistent they've been really across the course of the campaign. I think it's steadied a bit in, in recent weeks, in recent months. Uh, but I think, for me, whoever wins this game on Sunday, I think will go on and win the title. I agree with you. Um, it's an interesting one because of the elements looking at the two teams, looking at the way they're playing, Ruffy, and I think we all agree it's a different Rangers. I think, for me, it's winner takes all. Um, if Rangers decide to adopt a tactic of high press in your face, you know, really, really go at Celtic, really make it a, a difficult physical battle. I mean, I can see this game... Is Rangers there for the taking? I think Rangers can win it. 
because of the way he's got them playing. But if they if they sit off and let Celtic start to get the rhythm, I think they're in big trouble. But I see this as if I was looking at a favourite to win it, I can just see Rangers edge it because of the question we've been talking about, which is it's a different Rangers. It is a different Rangers. Uh, I think there's going to be goals in this one. Uh, I think both of them will play big attacking football. I, I still don't think both defences are solid. You know, obviously Rangers lost a bad goal against Hibs, you know, but they had more chances at the other end. And I think when Celtic are tested as well, they're a wee bit vulnerable. So, as, as Lee said, I think it's on the day. It's one of the ones where the big player stands up and does something special yeah. to win the game. But I definitely think there's goals in it. And I think, uh, I, I, I think if Celtic had the chance just now, I think they'd be happy to go there and take a draw. Yeah. Winner takes all for you? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. Yeah. Um, probably. I think with the psychological, with the confidence you get with the game if you go and win it, um, I'll stand you in, in good stead for the run-in. So, to answer your question, yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> Took a while, but we got I know, I know. Um, anyway, on that note, uh, as ever with these games... Uh, you can join us for our live reaction after the match as well. It kicks off at 12 and then uh, probably just at 2 o'clock we'll be on air on Twitter, on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. Uh, uh, basically, getting your thoughts on it, reading out your messages on our feed across Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. We want to know what you think uh, after this game, who's going to win um, all the build-up this week. But join us live if you can after Rangers against Celtic to give us your thoughts on it. Um, that's something to look forward to. Um, just as we, as a little footnote, uh, again, I'm looking at, I think it's Aberdeen and Hearts are the two games left for Livingston. David Martindale, I was speaking to him last week and he, he's defiantly saying that they're going to keep battling until it's mathematically impossible. I don't think he's got to show any negativity to his players. Some of them already know and are thinking where they're going to be playing next season. Yeah, well, I think David's been touching on that, you know, most of the season about his budget and, you know, players, the wages that the players are on and some of them will be looking elsewhere or, or right, Penrice is away to Hearts and other players will probably leave as well. I, I think, unfortunately for David, he's he saved them that many times, you know, but I think this is one I don't think he'll get out of. If he, if he was to go into the split and even he was four or five points adrift, he might think he's got a chance, but as it is just now, it's ten and you can't expect him to take uh, anything out of them. But uh, the only thing I would say, that park's terrible. It yeah. looks worse. It's getting worse and worse as the season goes on. I think it's a bad image for the game. So, from the pitch point of view, if they go down, then I'm happy with that. Yeah. Um, okay. Scathing. Um, but nevertheless, uh, David Martindale, uh, I think he feels as if the odds are stacked against him this season. It's a party. Being in the Premier League, if I'm really honest, at a club our size, that depresses me. Does that make sense? Because I want to go to my bed every day. I want to come into work and I want to win games of football. And I don't want to accept, oh, it was Celtic, oh, it was Rangers, oh, it was Habs, Aberdeen, it was Hearts. I don't want to be that person. So I think I can see why people sometimes say that, but definitely not for me. And I don't think the players are that either, to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'll tell you one thing, though, Ruffy. I've thoroughly enjoyed him on this show mm -hmm. when he came on and... Um, you know, his insight into the game. Uh, there was a point where I think he could have got out. There was a real possibility of St. John's, and I wonder if he regrets that. Yeah, uh, I think obviously, as I said, he's touched on it all year, you know, how hard it is to, you know, to get the support to turn up, to support the team. You know, he struggles with that a lot. They haven't got a big support, you know, which might be, even when they're winning games and they're run a wee bit of a run, you know, you would think the support would have got behind them, but it's not happening. And he's saying there, he's always been positive. Any time, whether he's win, lose or draw, he's always been very positive, always talked up the game, which I think is good as well. Yeah. Um, OK, Hearts won, Kilmarnock won. Uh, it's always good scoring a goal when you've signed a five-year deal, Ruffy. It just, you know, vindicates the manager's, <laughs> the manager's yeah. decision. But over and above that, if you're going to score a goal, Lee, I'm not sure... If you have scored one like Marley Watkins did for no. Kilmarnock, that was a peach, wasn't it? I know, I did, I have. Yeah? Scotland. Well, Scotland, it was similar, was it not? No. What, you know, which me? one? Against Ukraine? At Hamden? Yes, very similar. Wee bit, yeah. wee bit. Wee bit of touch. I didn't know it was good. Yeah. 
I'll try to bum myself up here. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, Lee, he's <laughs> getting <laughs> nail off at all, <laughs> Mark, <laughs> on, the, on this programme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, blow your own trumpet, we're that, quite happy we about it. Um, but oh, it was what a peach, wasn't it? What a finish. <laughs> what an important goal as well to secure top six. Uh, especially with Hearts taking the lead. Uh, Marley Watkins missed a few chances. Yeah. Uh, he's been good for them though, hasn't he? Nah, he's been brilliant. He's 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 a target man. He's got a bit of mobility and he scores goals. Um, obviously, knows as many as Derek was wanting. That's why he's putting the two strikers up. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he feel that he's a twenty goal season? So, um, what a, what an achievement for Kilmarnock, Derek McInnes. Um, it's was it three years ago they were in the championship. Yeah, and they've it's come incredible. up stabilised and now they're probably going to secure fourth place, never mind uh, just getting in the top six. I don't want to make you feel bad, but your old gaffer actually scored one similar to that in a cup final. Who? Oh, like, oh, I saw he did. It was a belter, wasn't that it? That was the third best goal at the final. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Um, of course, you mentioned Derek there, and I love the fact that Derek McInnes has mentioned, uh, here's a wee bit of thinking into why he's playing two up top. You know, Shankham's a, a special player, and... Uh, you know, everybody wants those types of strikers. The simple reason for us, we've, we committed to two strikers cause, because we didn't think we could buy uh, get a striker in the door that could guarantee his 20. So, in simple, basic terms, we just put two together that would maybe get us 10 each. And Mali's up to 12 now. Bass, the sales on nine. So, that was a simplistic way of looking at it. We committed to two strikers and we've got, what, 20 odd goals from two strikers. Yeah, it's a brilliant way to look at it and, and full march to him for going about it that way. Um, Kelly, Ross County and St Johnston, two games remaining, sitting in fourth place. And uh, it's just been it's just been brilliant the way he's gone about it this season with the team because, you know, they've got entertaining players that we all love to see. Danny Armstrong, I like Vizel. I don't know about yourself, Ali. Yeah, I think they've had a great campaign. You consider last year they were fighting for their lives just down at the, the bottom end and... and uh, trying not to be sucked into it, but I think it's been. I think they've been fairly consistent across the course of the season. I think uh, they're very difficult to beat, and of course they've taken some pretty big scalps. They've beaten Celtic twice, beaten Celtic at Rugby Park, beaten Celtic at Celtic Park. They, they beat Rangers the opening day of the league season. I think they, they seem they're a team that you can sense the confidence, and even uh, I was at Rugby Park. Uh, last weekend when, when St Mirren obviously had that 2-0 lead and then you know Kilmarnock came out and you could just sense the growing momentum as soon as they got a goal back and St Mirren collapsed you could just sense the belief around the stadium sense the confidence of the players and I think that only comes through winning games I think that only comes through a real confidence in one another confidence in the, the system that you're playing the way that you're playing and I think that's been reflected in their, their league position Yeah, what about Hearts, Ruffy? because this is a season where you know, I mean, there's, he had a great run there, an incredible run, only two defeats. And when you look at the run that they were on, um, no surprise that everybody is now raving about Stevie Naismith rather than some Hearts fans who were maybe questioning yeah. him as the manager. Most definitely, yeah. He's done remarkably well with the run that they're on, you know, and they're, they're in Europe again, you know, which is a massive bonus uh, financially and for the players as well. I think we spoke about it last Friday. They're now, now looking ahead to next year, way ahead of all the other teams in their sort of a position, bringing players in. And it just shows you how well run that club are. Yeah, and uh, even the Hearts Gaffer isn't going to be too critical of his side uh, over the draw. Yeah, it's a bit of everything, but the frustration is that when we did make a few passes, what we broke on them 3v3, 4v3 at times. And then it just broke down. It maybe picked the wrong option or the, the pass is over hit. That's the frustrating part. But to be honest, I can't be too hard on the players because it's an achievement having 10, 11 players away international. The next stage is to deal with that and get through the results. I'm content. Uh, great save from uh, Xander Clark in that game, Ruffy. Two or three in, in the game, you know, and just talking about it there, you know, Craig Gordon will be sitting there thinking, you know, I need to get in. I need to get a chance to get in to... You know, Steve Clark to make him pick him for the Euros, but as Xander keeps playing like that, you can't see him leaving him out. So there's still a big, big decision that Stevie Clark's got to make. Yeah, eight games to go. Oh, aren't hold on a second. He's going, he's going to play the semi final. Yeah, but that would have be four games he's played all season. Yeah, at you said level. he's going. No, no, I no, said no. Kelly should go. If I was Kelly, I'd be extremely disappointed if. 
and everything that I've done throughout the the whole campaign. If I was left out because it's Craig Gordon's back. Yeah. I'm not saying he's a better goalkeeper than Craig Gordon. <laughs> it's, I'm, it's just saying, I'm just think, I'm, I'm just saying. I agree with you. I'm just yeah. saying. And then you've got hey, you're longevity. You're you've got the longevity of when you come back for the Euros, if something happens to the first two choice goalkeepers, Craig Gordon's retired to. Yeah. Who's he calling him? Yeah, I know. Don't, hey, don't explain I wouldn't, logic to him. You not thought he should go. Manager. You, you thought he should go Who? with Gordon. <laughs> who'd, who'd be a manager I, know, yeah, I think it's a really tough I think the fact that you had four goalkeepers in the last camp tells you how difficult a decision it is <laughs> you played one no. you only played one like yeah but you, to, to Ruffy's credit you did say that he would play yeah. as number one I think he's brought Craig in you know, for, for the two games because of the services done to the club you know, and I probably I would expect Stevie Clark has had a word with him, you know, to tell him the circumstances. So it's great for him to bring him back in through what he's been through with the leg break and everything on and that. And the, he's, he's made him feel good that you are still part of the Scotland squad, but he still has to make that decision of disappointing somebody. Do you think he's spoke to Craig Gordon and said, yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. as it stands, you yeah, definitely, potentially yeah. might not be there? Yeah, yeah, I think he's got it. I think... Steve Clark has always been on record and saying loyalty, loyalty, loyalty to everybody, you yeah. know, and when he talks about players like the big boy Hanley who's injured or somebody else who's injured, mm -hmm. he always says, I'm waiting on them, I'm going to get them every chance possible because they've done it for me. OK. Um, boy, did Aberdeen need that win against Ross County? Yeah, they did. Um, they badly needed it. I still don't think they're quite out of the woods just yet. Uh, however, I think the, the bigger question is: is when are they going to appoint a manager? Oh, you it's know, be um, this week, surely. We, we we spoke about it earlier. The fact that when uh, Neil Warnock left, he had suggested that an appointment was imminent. We were still sitting waiting to hear what's happening with that, and I think Aberdeen fans will be getting a bit frustrated. <sighs> I think they probably want to see what's happening, what direction the club are going in, someone to come in to set the foundations for next season, to assess the squad, to look at where they are. I think, though, in terms of the hearing now, I think, obviously, St Johnson are right on their on their neck, so I think it was an important win for them. But uh, it's still, quite a, still time for Aberdeen to be sucked into it. You think so? I think that win, for me, I think they win. I think it probably does, if you look now. Look, that five points between them, I have no specs on, but I think it's, is it five points between Aberdeen and St Johnson? Yeah. Uh, I think it probably does. However, such has been the inconsistency of their form this term, I, I, I still think you, you wouldn't be entirely relaxed if you were an Aberdeen fan. Yeah. I think they're safe. I think it's between, I think it's between St Johnson and Ross County. So they are. Um, I think... Peter Leaven's done brilliant. I know he's, I'm not just saying that because he's a friend, but when you look at the results he's got, Saturday was huge for Aberdeen, I think, <coughs> for the fans, for the players' confidence, for the board to have not appointed a manager yet. Does that does Peter doing Peter doing so well give them a little bit of breathing space, the board, to say whatever the hold up is, it's all right. I've got Peter the now. I'm not suggesting Peter's going to get the job or no. wants a job or is in contention for the job, but I think it takes away people standing at the barrier shouting. Yeah, that's that's my point. Um so therefore I'm expecting if they're not going to appoint the manager, say this week, why do they not just come out and say we're well, just giving Peter it to the end of the season? Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point. So actually. they can go back to the drawing board because there's something clearly not quite right with with the appointment of a new manager. The problem is, though, that Alan Burrows has already come out in the last yeah. week and, mm -hmm. and and stated that they're that you know that they're close. This is mm -hmm. this is imminent. So yeah, that's why we're all thinking it's obviously somebody who's un, under some kind of contract or some something like that. You know, because if it was somebody out of contract, they would have probably appointed them right now. Mm. Uh, so I think the reason is the main reason now is keeping the supporters on board. Because they're the ones that are important to the players on the park now to get right behind the team for the rest of the season. Yeah, just on that, and I know it's a difficult one for all of us to call. It's a big call for them, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. I just wonder, because you, we haven't had a sniff, um, it's not going to be a Lenny, certainly not going to be a Malky Mackay. The only one out of left field that it could be, who's in the game here, could be Stephen Robinson because of his association with Alan Burrows. But... Because we haven't heard a sniff of anything, 
you're starting to look and say they must have somebody from out with Scottish Shores. And then you're waiting for that moment of door opens, Aberdeen fans' reaction, is he the man? What a big call this guy is, whoever he is. I think the reaction's got to be positive. It's got to be... I don't mean somebody that we know. Uh, I don't think it's got to be, a, obviously, a, a, an obvious yeah. coming through the door and somebody who's done well in Norway or Sweden or whatever. You is know, there an Ebi Skovdal appointment again? You know, I don't mean Ebi no, uh, overall. I, I think it gets back to who's who's the, the figurehead and making the appointment. You know, yeah. who's the person who is giving advice out there? I and mean, we hear stories about Sir Alec Ferguson. You know, when when somebody wants a manager, they phone him up, and the next minute. Whoever he suggests gets a job. I'm not saying that's what's happening there now, but I mean that. So, certainly not in Aberdeen's budget. No, no, <laughs> no. So I'm just wondering who in that collective is making the decisions and pointing them in the right direction after all the mistakes that were made. Yeah. Um, what do you make of Ross County, Ali? Um, yeah, I think they're in a bit of trouble. Um, I really do. I think uh, they can definitely. Well, I think they're in in the bit now. Um, I think it was a huge win for Aberdeen, obviously, uh, on Saturday. Ross County now, what have they got next? They're away to Rugby Park and then they've got Rangers before yeah. they split. Yeah, I don't know if you would fancy them picking anything up yeah. from those two games. I can't, I, I can't see them picking anything up from those two games, Lee. And, and then, of course, the other thing about it, which we all know, is it's the cutthroat five games after the split where they all get to play against each mm. other, where the true determination comes. It's it's so tough when you look at them and you say to yourself, who's got the best goal scorer out of the bottom two? Uh, who are vying for the playoff. We, we, I think we've all conceded Livingston are gone. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's Ross County, St Johnson. Who's got the better well, goal? Is there a Simon strikers, Murray? Is there a Nicky Clark? Uh, Simon Murray and Nicky Clark are the two goals. obvious ones. That Simon they're Murray's local. scary, man, when he scores. It's frightening. What? Scores, what do you mean? Just the way he just goes mental. It's just I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was wondering, I was wondering where you were going no, with that. No, no, I like Simon like Murray like going mental. Yeah, <laughs> no, you can see how much it means to They've, him they've got goals in them when you look at the two. I just think I think St. Johnson will be above them. I think St. Johnson will be above Ross County. Ross County to go to the playoff. Mm -hmm. And you're still adamant that... Uh, the two championship sides, yeah. one going up and one in the playoff, will take them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This year, yeah. First time ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all going okay. back to Dingwall. Mm -hmm. That's all going back to Dingwall. Oh, we've been a revenge ruffian there if that would happen. Can you imagine that? I don't think we'll want that to happen again. You know, it was, yeah. uh, but I still think it was St. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll stick with you on that and we'll throw it up in the clip at the end of the we'll season. We'll remember that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, talk us through a fantastic <coughs> park, Ali. It was absolutely brilliant, eh? For, for park, for thrills, <laughs> yes. Um, it was fairly staid, I'd have to say. Um, I actually thought St Mirren were prob probably the better of the two teams. They had a couple of chances at 1-0. They could just have closed the game out. Keanu Bacchus had a, a decent chance. He could just have shut the game down after that. As it was, uh, you know, you're always in it when it's only one goal and Theo Bear just bundling the ball in at the, the back post. Um, but other than that, I have to say it wasn't vintage. It was um, yeah. it was just one of those games where I think both teams ultimately were happy to come out with it, unscathed and with another point. Yeah, and the other thing, which obviously is a wee learning curve for you as a as a co-commentator on the BBC, remember, there's no such a thing as there was nothing happening at a game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you there struggled, There wasn't you? a lot happening <laughs> at the game. I think <laughs> Alison spot on. I think St Mirren were probably the better team first half. They they hit the, the bar twice in the space of, I don't know, about 10 seconds. Um, and then they've got their goal and then just conceded a, a poor goal. I think Stephen Robinson will be... A little bit frustrated um, after having taken the lead in the game, but I, I think what, what do they need a point at the next two games to secure top six? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that sounds right. And the next game's Hearts, and then they're Celtic mm -hmm. away. I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I think they'll do it. I think they'll get the point against Hearts, and I don't think they'll get anything for the Celtic game. And if they do, what an achievement! I'd love yeah, them back to, get to it. back. Fantastic. I think they've been a great season. Yeah. You know, apart from all the obvious, you know, the Rangers, the Celtic, the Hibs, Hearts, and Aberdeen, I think they've stood out 
more than any of the others for nearly the whole season. It'd be a shame. Was it Livingston that lost it in the last game one season? When they played, they were Motherwell, up there all they the played time. Motherwell, they played Motherwell in the last minute or something yeah. like that, and they, they lost it. So they, the St Mirrens and the Motherwells and that, they, they know how important financially it is to be in that top six. Uh, can I just say to you, just before we get to talk about St John's and Dundee, who's manager of the year this year? Well, again, it's whether you go down the tracks of the budget that the manager's playing on or how well he's done or winning trophies. I'll tell you who's who's got to be in the running. I'll tell you. Can't hang fire on that question just a minute, right? I've jumped. I'm coming. I've jumped. I'm ready. I'm ready. I've jumped the gun here. Peter's going to tell us who manager of the year is. Who I think, and I don't know. Even though the managers vote for it, right? And they're voting shortly. But I'm just going to tell you in one minute who I think. But can I just say, Tony Doherty deserves credit because if you think about Dundee, he's just come into the division. You know, a lot of people look and say you've always been Derek McInnes's assistant, and he's gone in there with a nice little blend of youngsters, a wee bit of experience in there, and Dundee have been a credit to the division. Yeah, I would agree with most of that, but they went down a different road than everybody else. They've uh, got 11 loan players yeah. from other teams, and they're doing well, I'm not taking that away from them, but other teams don't have the same resources to do that kind of thing. Right, so you think maybe they've played the system? No, I think he's, he's done. He's, he's came out and admitted, you know, this is the way we're going. This yeah. is uh, the way we're, we're, we're going to do it. W with the young ones, McGowan and them, he's played them in. He's got the wee boy Beck in for, is it Liverpool? Liverpool he yep. He's got 11 of them, you know, which <coughs> I'm sure St Mirren haven't done, Motherwell haven't done. So I, if I was to sway, I would go towards the St Mirren manager. Mitigating circumstances. I'm not saying Tony Doherty for manager of the year. I'm just yeah. saying, you know, he, he's done well. And by the same criteria, you'd have to mention Derek McInnes, yeah. Stephen Robinson too. For me, I, I think if Rangers win the league, it's got to be Clement. Okay, you've kind of jumped the gun on me there. I shouldn't have said that to you because I wasn't even hinting at him being manager here. I just said right. he needs credit. He's won against yeah. St Johnston. Yeah, let's give him credit. Yeah. yeah, okay, thanks for that, Lucky. <laughs> thanks for giving credit. I'll tell you one thing that I'm not going to give credit to, and Ali, I, I, it just leaves me bemused. A 12-year-old fan was hit with um, a bit of pyrotechnics, which again has caused uh, some facial damage. Um, and I, I don't know how stupid youngsters can be in bringing in pyrotechnics, throwing them, the damage that it, it does to fans. Um, and not only fans if you're throwing it at them, but sometimes fans who are holding them as well. You know, they can blow up in your in your hand. It's just stupid and... and I think we need to take a harder line on it. They're not for me, I have to say. It does nothing for me, but I think we're probably not the demographic to speak about this. I think if you speak to anyone under the age of 30, they've got a really different viewpoint on it. I think maybe there's a conversation, a, a, a more sober and sensible conversation to be had about how maybe there is a place for safer, if there is such a thing pyro because I don't think it's going to go away. I think we can wring our hands about it and I think we can say we'd be happy we'd be happy to see the back of it. It honestly it does nothing for me at all. But I suspect it's it's here it's a problem that's here to say and I think really what we have to be talking about is how we find solutions to it and I'm not sure that that solution is going to be a blanket ban. Okay. Um, right here's my suggestion to you right now. He's almost certainly in my book going to be a nominee. Here's my suggestion for who I think could be manager of the year. I understand the Clermont Cup Championship as well. Uh, like Ian uh, yeah, all, for, all 42 managers vote. Uh, so with that in mind, I think John McGlynn's got the biggest shout ever this season. 25 wins, six draws. Falkirk could be the Invincibles this season. Mm -hmm. They've won the championship. They've won the League One. They're going into the championship. Great credit to them. Congratulations to everybody. It's a fabulous club, Falkirk. Lots of great people in the background. But you go the season unbeaten, you know, and he's already won the title. It's in the bag. Clement comes in and steadies the ship. Rogers, um, no discredit to him. Great coach, uninspiring this season, uh, coming back. Um, Clement's only had a, po a portion of the season and done really well. Derek McInnes, you've mentioned, you've mentioned uh, Stephen Robinson, but there's no 
surely there's no out and out definitive the way McGlynn McGlynn's evidence just stacks up unless you're going to tell me somebody from no. the championship Ruffy no no Dick Campbell's doing well he's five he's not <laughs> <really like that. laughs> he, he's going to battle you <laughs> for that line by the way um, uh, and that's what I'm saying you have to it's how all the managers think you know the managers I would think in the lower divisions would agree with you 100% you know but the, the Premier League managers would see what they've been through for the whole season but who are they seeing though who are they seeing Philippe Clement's come in to steady the ship from a dodgy start do you know what I mean He's not, you know, and he's won the League Cup which is great great credit to him we won't know who's won the title by the time you know well potentially by the time you get to you know the, the, the first Sunday of, the, of May where they, the, the, the votes will have already been cast you know, before we know who's won the title. And it's not as if it's an out-and-out -out, mm -hmm. you know, stonewall certainty for that. For, you know, Philip Clermont come in at the start and they were running away with the league, you'd go, mm -hmm. he's just come into Scottish football, bang, it's him. I don't think it's as clear-cut this season, Lee, unless you're going to tell me differently. You're just going to say because the Rangers connect, I think he deserves it. Yeah. But I get it. I get what you're saying. The... Title race could go at the end of the the last day, and then the, does he deserve it if they don't win the league? Yeah, I think he does. But yeah, it's not a crime to have have an opinion based on the Rangers connection. Just, it's just. But yeah. do you know what it's like? Yeah, but it's like it's only a crime if you start calling penalties. And it's, just, <laughs> it's just a ridiculous statement. I um, think Stephen Robinson and Derek McInnes have been. That I think I think yeah. they they've got to be in the mix. Yeah. And again, we don't hold the vote. Nobody, it's managers who vote for it. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, who's getting it for you? I think I would edge towards Philip Clement too. Yeah. I, I think just the mess that he inherited, how quickly he brought a level of composure to that Rangers team. I think what you would say is that they're greater than the sum of their parts. And for me, that's always an indication of a very good coach. Uh, I take your point about John McGlynn. I think uh, what Falkirk have done this season is remarkable. I think any team in any league at any standard to go through a campaign unbeaten is very, very difficult to do. And I think it takes something special. I think coming into the top flight, and I think particularly at Celtic and Rangers, the scrutiny that you're under day to day, the pressure of that job every day, the intensity of it makes it a, a, a special kind of role. And I definitely think Clement. Yeah. Anyway. Ruffy? I, I would think Clement as well, uh, taking Europe into the, the equation as well. I think what, he's, what they've done in, in Europe and representing their country has been fantastic and the, the games they've played, and, and, and I'm old school, it's winning things for me. Yeah. I know you're saying he, he might not win one of them you know, before, but he's already won one. No, but nothing. So, all I'm saying is nothing will be yeah. determined by I the think, time the votes I think are there are. I think there are other Player of the Year, uh, Manager of the Year awards, no, apart from the sports writers and the yeah. others, another one. I think there's an award that generally somebody for the lower divisions get a better chance of winning. Yeah, OK. Uh, we'll wait and we'll see. Um, the good thing is, is Lee and uh, Neil will be uh, obviously sitting at the PLZ table on the PFA night. So if a manager wins it that's out of left field, both of them can swear because yeah. both of them are used to swearing yeah. at managers of the year awards. Yeah. I, I was sitting beside Lee that night. <laughs> no, Lenny. Lenny, Lenny. Lenny. <laughs> no, I was sitting beside Lenny that night. Funny. Funny. <laughs> Who's the manager that got yeah, it? Mixu. Mixu Mix Mix part of Lenny. Uh, you're yeah. having a fun <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Like, you're having a laugh. <laughs> yeah, you've abbreviated that. Um, anyway, uh, the it's only a Friday you can swear. Yeah, it's only a Friday. You can swear, right? <laughs> you're a disgrace. So yeah, right at the last. Match the mother. Milk <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Um, predictor scores. Uh, oh, I had a good week, Ruffy. Ruffy. I was. I, I've fired myself I right back. Up, I don't think I left it a bit late. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but poor Kerry. There's uh, <laughs> Kerry. Kerry. She's not doing it anywhere, is she? <laughs> she's, she's just, Listen, what's happened? What's I've, happened? I've not done you it you for the last you? month or so. I've, I've, I just have. My my Fridays are too busy <laughs> to yeah. remember well, predictions. Like <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, Pat Lowe uh, has replaced Aurora Borealis at the top. Oh, that's good news And for you. Pat could be... Uh, well, remember, Aurora Borealis is just one person. It's not an entire family. Uh, Pat Lowe looks as if, if he can maintain that, Ruffy, he could be picking um, a partner to come to our table for, for the night. I 
be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's good to meet the people who are mad. <laughs> he said, yeah, said with all the sincerity <laughs> of, of a man who, who will sit with somebody else on the night. Anyway, uh, that's the predictor. Uh, Dundee United in the battle, did you... Yeah, I had Dundee United, yeah. yeah. I, I thought Wraith might have sneaked it, but... Yeah, no, there's still a wee bit to go yet. I mean, uh, as we know in this championship, we've all been there, the, the bottom team can beat the top team. So, you know, it just gives Dundee United and the supporters sort of begin to wobble a wee bit, you know, giving them a bit of hope. But uh, they should be up there and they should be head and shoulders above everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it always helps when you've got a Derek McKinnon strike partnership, as he mentioned, two strikers, Molt and Tony Watt, 30 goals between them. Uh, it goes such a long way, especially in that division. Uh, quality, Dundee United have got a quality squad. They've got really good individual players. It's easy to say they should be 12, 15 points clear, but it doesn't always work that way, I think. Uh, Ian Murray and, and Wraith have, will still be there or thereabouts. Come, I, I, I don't think it's fully finished yet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, a couple of things uh, to finish. First of all, Liverpool have got the advantage in the title race. There's a few people here who've been picking Man City, mm. but Liverpool have got their noses in front, and boy, do I hope they keep it there. I, I'd love to see Liverpool go and win the title this season. I really would. I'd, I, I just, I, I, I do think that Man City still have something about them. I, I just, I wouldn't discount them just yet. But yeah. I, I think I would like to see Liverpool go on and, and edge it. Uh, however, we'll see. Yeah, are you sticking with Man City? I'm sticking with Man City. Yeah, well, let's hope you get egg in your face. It was a dreadful game yesterday, wasn't it? They cancelled each other out, Lee. I was expecting. See, see with the, the ability that was on the pitch, uh, for me, it was a really disappointing game. Um, it wasn't as end-to-end -end as I thought. It wasn't as entertaining as I thought. Um, but Liverpool, what a position they're in. But I'm with Alisson, I, I think. Did, have they still got each other to play? No. 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 So as Liverpool need to do, it sounds simple. Just yeah. win every game, that's it. Win every game. But the run-in is slightly, I think, favouring Man City. Um, they've got a tough game uh, coming up against Aston Villa. Then they've got Crystal Palace. They've obviously got the Champions League as well. But of the games that they've got remaining, um, I, I think you might look at the Chelsea game. Brighton away is a tough one. Um, and then after that, it's Wolves, Fulham and West Ham's, Ruffy. I think I think they've got a slightly. Spurs at White Hartley. This is what we were talking about earlier on about the manager of the year. If Klopp wins the that league, yeah. you know, if they were to give it to somebody else, you know, why why would that happen? Do you know what I mean? With the circumstances that we are talking about in Scotland. Yeah. What do you mean if they give it to somebody else? It's a manager's revolt, Ruffy. Yeah. They no. take into consideration everything. If it's just manager of the year, it's one what you won then it's a no-brainer of a year, just give it to the guy who wins the league title. Depending on when the votes are cast, changes and alters slightly managers' thinking, you know? And there's lots of things contributing factors, as well as... still got a vote, Ali, in the Football writers. Yeah. Who will you vote for? Clement? Where? Probably Clement. Yeah. Where? I'm not... I'm oh, that's so a it was a harder one. Yeah. Young player was quite straightforward. Oh, is there a four already? Are you, are you keeping yeah. it under your hat? Is yes. there a four? Is yeah. It? Okay. Yes. Well, yeah. Would you like to think the players would be Shankland would win me a shout? I think you know, Shankland is definitely there. Yeah. Obviously, Tavernier. Yeah, yeah and absolutely. Well, I, I mean, it's tough. Um, there are some seasons where you have an out, where you have a really obvious uh, candidate yeah. for both. I think. Uh, we shouldn't shout down our league because we've got a we've got a great title race. We're still uncertain yeah. at the who's going to be in the playoff position, and of course it's great for England because they've got they've got three teams involved battling it out to see who can win the title. And uh, this is Arteta and Pep's take on it. It's, it's not in our hands. Only we can do is um, Aston Villa next game. Try to you know to win the game. It's only we can do because. Always we were top of the league, we were the favourites. It was in our hands, now it's not. So it's simple. You know, you want to win the game, we prepare to, to win it. We could not win it, uh, make sure we draw it, and, and we've done that. And 11 men said, well, we were here and the story was very different. And you have to continue to make steps as a team and try to improve, and today we've done that. Yeah, nine games left. We're all wondering, there are nine games left, Ruffy, uh, to yeah, win the title. Are you sticking with Man City? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Lee? 
Man City. Man City. Okay. Seven points, that is. I'll go, with, uh, I'll go with the. Uh, I'll go with King Kenny, and uh, the mugs are imported here, Ali. They open up so many doors for us, and um, this one here is going to open up a door for us because I, I think, Ruffy, I think, Ruffy, yeah. Leon Smith is going to get an absolute tonking once he sees the skill of you at the net, yeah. and then my serves improve greatly. Well, if there's a couple of Wimbledon tickets up, we might have to throw it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Leon. Thanks for watching, and to everybody else, don't forget subscribe as well as download the PLZ Soccer app from uh, Alan Ruff, uh, Alison McConnell and Lee McCulloch who thankfully didn't say any sweary words today. It's been an absolute <laughs> joy on the programme. Thank you for listening and watching.